Shush Box Podcast, a safe space for self-expression, healing, and empowerment. Brought to you by Chani Ra, writer and artist. Self-love and embodiment coach, Jacqueline Michelle. And Sunita, founder of Shush Box, the wellness platform supporting survivors of sexual trauma. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Shushbox podcast. I'm Charney, and today I'm so excited to say that I'm here with Madeline Heather, the founder and host of the Reclaim Me podcast, a podcast that shares real stories from real survivors. I'm Madeline Heather, and I'm the host of the podcast Reclaim Me. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. So... I guess we just start at the beginning, really. It's the sort of typical beginning question. I'm going to ask you, what made you start Reclaim Me? So I had been thinking about doing something in the podcasting space for a while. I have mm. a very loud voice and I want to share it with the world. <laughs> um, <laughs> but and I'm, I'm honestly not ashamed. I could talk the back legs off a donkey. But um, I am a survivor of sexual abuse and... I, when the Me Too movement happened, um, I did share some snippets of what I'd gone through and I noticed the amount of people that were contacting, connecting with me about that. And so many of them had said that, that they had never told anybody in their life and that me sharing my story had made them feel validated in some way and that I was somebody they felt comfortable talking to. And I think it was really important for me to I was just harnessing that, I guess. And I I started it during lockdown and I realized that the more and more I posted about this, the more and more people were engaging with me. And I just did one video on Instagram about the process that you would go through if you wanted to report a sexual assault in my state in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, I had eight women that I'd never spoken to before come forward to me and tell me about their experience and two men as well had, and that was in the space of I think 12 hours of posting a video that didn't get that much traction. Like it didn't go viral or anything. These were just friends of friends that had had the the video sent to them. And I guess I realized that I, by sharing my own trauma and by sharing the knowledge that I have gained in this space, that I could create a space where people could also feel comfortable with sharing their stories and make it normal and make it okay to talk about. Because I got, I guess, sick of people referring to me as so strong. Mm. You're so strong for having done this. I can't believe how strong you are. And I don't see myself as any different than anyone else. I think I have worked through my trauma to a space where I have accepted what happened to me and I feel empowered with who I am enough to be able to share that. And I think if I was to just provide somebody a stepping stool that they might feel the same way too. And that's how I decided to start to, to start reclaim me. It's so inspiring. And just the way that, like you were saying, you tell one story and suddenly you've got eight people telling their story. You're right. You don't have to go viral. Um, and just you saying that it wasn't, didn't get much traction, but you heard all of those stories just kind of highlights how common it is. And you're saying to make it normal. It is normal, unfortunately, to have these experiences. And that's case in point right there, a normal video, on your normal profile, suddenly you have eight people in your inbox. So I just wanted to highlight that to show like, we're not kind of anomalies in this space. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, Absolutely not. And I think it, it's it's definitely worth highlighting that the, the statistics there are prevalent enough. Yeah. And when people get a knowledge around what actually constitutes sexual abuse or sexual assaults, I think the category widens because a lot of people don't realize that what happened to them does constitute that. So I think more and more that we're educating people, the more and more people, unfortunately, are a part of this club. Definitely. It does cast the net a lot wider. And I do think there is like a thing people do where if they're not 100% sure if what they've 
been through is abuse and then suddenly you're sort of like comparing your own experiences to things that you've read in the news and thinking oh but that was worse so maybe I shouldn't so yeah it's super important to highlight like everything that does constitute abuse and does give people that chance to sort of process what happened to them so I think the work you're doing is like so important that's what why I really wanted to sort of I've been on your podcast but I really wanted to flip it around and like talk to you a bit more because I think I talked to you for about five hours on that podcast um and I wanted to know like are there because obviously like you just told us the reasons behind why you wanted to start Reclaim Me and you know sort of your motivations in doing so and what you wanted to achieve from it but are there any kind of revelations that you've had since you started that you didn't expect that you were going to have and sort of things that you've gotten out of it that you were blindsided by yeah I, I did not anticipate how much knowledge um, I was going to be able to provide people all over the world um, and of all different demographics, um, just even with things like the freeze response. Um, these are things that I was aware of that I was that I was educated in. And by letting other people share their stories, we've started conversations about having different types of responses. And those have been the things that have drawn in so many people to contact me as well. And I think just in the sense that I've validated maybe their experience by sharing the breadth of which assault is and by dispelling the myth that it's a stranger in an alley with a trench coat has done a lot for people. And I wasn't expecting there to be so much of an emphasis on the education aspect as it is on providing the survivors with a chance to tell the story and reclaim the narrative themselves. Um, but I think one of the the people who came on my podcast, she had said to me that from each episode, she'd gained something specifically. And she'd related to each person who had been on about a level of their experience in some way. And she found that really valuable. So I think those are, I didn't realize, I guess, how much that survivors would be taking out of it, but also how much I was a, we have been able to educate people on validating their own feelings about their abuse. Yeah, I think that's very true with your content. That's what I like about it is that you do approach things in a really human way and in a really relatable way, but it is also extremely informative and you get that balance really well, I think, where you learn something and it's all very like, you know, you can tell you've done your research, you know what you're talking about. There's not misinformation being spread, but it's not in a sort of um, kind of scary, like, do you know what I mean? In your face, kind of like, ah, criminal's way. Like it does... Because, I'm sure there are a lot of people that listen that are maybe listening because they are curious about their own experiences and piecing their own stories together. So I, I don't think it's intimidating. That's what I'm looking for. So I think you do really well at striking that balance. Um, yeah, thank one, you. One question I definitely wanted to ask you, even just from my experience um, of coming on your platform, because I think it was quite a while back now, but I do remember like being so like, yeah, I definitely want to do it. And I'm, I'm sort of, quite comfortable talking about, about my experience then on the day I was like I can't do this today and then having to reschedule and I'm sure that happens a lot with the kind of work that you're doing but how do you factor in time for yourself to debrief from these stories and kind of um I just imagine that I was saying I think even I said to you on, on the episode like I think it was 8 a.m for you and I thought well you just wake up and and do the work you do the damn thing but which is commendable but how do you look after yourself I have my own things that I do. I think I'm a bit of a uniquely weird individual. Um, I'm like a massive crime junkie. I am somebody who I really like understanding things and I like making sense of things. And I think when I speak to a survivor about their story, it, it does break my heart and makes me really sad. But I find that really energizing in the sense of wanting to tell their story well, in the sense of wanting to to frame something or you know even if it's like somebody's come on and they've got a podcast too can I get somebody else to go on there like can I help them in any way I think I'm so motivated by these people who are coming on and sharing their stories and I've rarely felt like I needed to take specific time um, I also work in a sector where I am confronted by things that can be quite traumatic at times so I have had trauma to I have had training on trauma-informed responses. Right. Um, so I think I know when I'm feeling a certain way and I've only had that a few times where I've had to take myself away. But in my general day-to-day -day life, 
they're a part of my routine anyway. There's not a day really that I don't go for a really long walk with my headphones in, listening to a podcast, walking with my dog. Mm-hmm. And I am single, but I will tell you right now, I, even if I have a partner and they're like, can I come? It's like, no, <laughs> this is my time. It's, it's the time that I would call it meditation to a degree. I'm not thinking about anything else other than what I'm listening to. And it's a really great way for me to look after myself and have time away from the space inside my head. Cause there's a lot going on there, but I guess, yeah, specifically with the content, it is very heavy, but I find that incredibly motivating to make me want to do more. Um, yeah. No, I think it's really important that you def- like, it's good that you're trauma informed as well. That makes a lot of sense. Um, Cause you, you do kind of tackle this in quite a professional manner from what I can see on the outside. And um, yeah, I always just wonder, it's like, cause I'm, I'm, I don't doubt that your inbox gets flooded as well. Sort of things you haven't scheduled in. So I always just wanted to make sure that you, have your routines in place because it can be like super draining and exhausting like I've done have a similar kind of platform and sometimes I I used to get super overwhelmed by the sort of um, messages people would send and you want to be able to help everybody right but obviously you're just one woman so I was really intrigued as to how you sort of carve out time to just not carry everybody's energy and everybody's problems on your back and kind of feel responsible yeah, it has been hard with a lot of the the messages, I think, as well. Um, someone contacted me recently from a country that don't have access to services. So in Australia, for example, for sexual and domestic abuse, we have 1-800-RESPECT, which is a very widely known national service. And in the UK, you've got a lot of different services as well. Um, even we, the, all of our countries have access to RAIN, which is a sexual abuse site for, for male victim survivors of sexual abuse this person did not have access to to phone calls or chat services in the country that they were in. And I've spent the last week trying to find services in their language that they can access for free because they have a limitation. And that's been something that's really weighed heavily on me. And not because it's their fault, it's not their fault, but the fact that there are people out there that I can't do anything for kills me. And I wish that the system was different. I wish I could do more. Um, but that's, they're the times that I have to like, take a step back and go take a deep breath. Can we get a second best option or something like that in place? Can I contact somebody that I know and remove myself from it being my responsibility to fix this? Definitely. Um, and also like, it shouldn't even be like, well done, but so commendable that you give people this time of day. Um, and I think anybody in your position will do the same. You know, you want to help as much as you can, but it is just so heartbreaking when you must feel so helpless because you, you're not in control of this whole country, right? Um, and it's just fucks that there are countries still like there's so many as well. Um, I wanted to ask, do you have any plans to sort of expand your podcast into anything else and like grow a team or what What do you see the future of Reclaim Me looking like? Yeah, um, I actually, I've been so busy with my usual job as well. Um, but there's a few things that are in train. Definitely. Um, I do have someone engaged who's going to be helping me out with a little bit of the content. Um, there is a website coming and there is merch coming, which is super exciting. (laughs) The hard part about the merch is that we have been so heavily delayed because Melbourne has been in lockdown again. Um, so we're nearing on, I think like 250 days in lockdown. Um, that's stage four lockdown. So no unessential services are open. You can't leave more than five kilometers past your house. Um, I can't see anybody really. Um, it's been, and I live alone, so it's been a really challenging time. And, but, you know, all of those services, all of those businesses who would be mm-hmm. able to do the things like merchandise are, are currently closed. And I want to try and make sure if I do anything like that, that I'm utilizing local services and local businesses, um, So that's been quite challenging, but I'm hoping that that will be coming soon. Yeah, I hope so too. I can't wait to see everything that you're doing. Um, I also wanted to ask, I feel like I just want to pick your brain so much. I'm so intrigued (laughs) by the work you're doing. But when you're hearing all of these kind of different stories um, with your podcast and, you know, you hear them, you edit them, you sort of give them a place so they can all sit together. And a lot of people are being helped by the content that you're making. Does this in a way help your own healing or is it something you just work through and kind of remove yourself from for the greater good of what the work is doing? 
I think it is. I think it's been instrumental in my healing. I think even with the work that I do in my normal job, I like serving people. And I think I like the fact that maybe I've been a part of helping somebody in some way. And I think that's what really pushes me and drives me as well is the opportunity that I have to assist somebody in telling their story or help them in a certain way to overcome something scary, like openly telling their story, um, being the first person that they open up to. Mm. You know, I've, I've recorded, I think, five or six episodes that are just sitting in the backlog because afterwards the survivor has decided that they're not ready. And that's okay. You know, I always say that I am just the person pushing the buttons that they are in charge of each and every step of the process for themselves. Um, So that's been quite challenging, but not for me in the sense that it's bad for the podcast. It's been challenging because you want to help people through it. And it's not a negative thing, I guess, but once you do tell your story, there is an overflow of emotions that comes out. Um, Mm. But just being Mm. a part of helping in any way, I guess, is the driver. That is what is so important about these kind of spaces being ran by survivors themselves, because there's so many kind of little things along the way that maybe somebody else wouldn't be so sensitive to or wouldn't think of. Like you were saying, okay, it's not about it being difficult for um, my podcast. You know, you're very sort of aware of the tiny steps it takes for somebody to tell their story. And like you were saying, the overflow of emotions. Um, So I think that's probably why people gravitate towards your work as well, because it's not just a safe space. It's like a safe, but also understood space. I just, yeah, I really try and make it that that's really important to me. And, you know, I've tried to make it a consistent weekly podcast at a certain time on a certain day, Mm. but people reschedule often And because it is a scary and terrifying thing and because people have decided that they don't want to post theirs and that's also okay. Um, I don't worry so much about being the person that has their podcast at a certain time every single day. Um, You know, I'm not sponsored or anything, so I don't have to worry about implications like that. But what I do have is the freedom to make this platform whatever I really want. And I think, yeah, I try to do it each week at the same time, but it just, it doesn't always work out that way. No, and that's so um, respectable because I know I've heard stories of people, you know, sort of going to speak on things that they've been through. And because the host maybe hasn't had those same experiences, it almost becomes like sort of trying to get that scandalous bits of the story out and, you know, asking more and more questions. But I think the thing that I liked about coming on your platform was you just kind of let the person leave there's not so many like and then what happened oh when was that and how do you know what I mean because you know you wouldn't like it so I think it's just same with shushbox it's just so important to have spaces that are led by our own community so that's another thing that I really really respect and like about reclaim me is it's just sort of like a bit of a for us by us um approach to survivor stories and I don't think we should have it any other way really yeah I think it's important as well um so there will be some people in the podcast that will go into a lot of detail it's important for them in telling their story to tell it in detail there are other people who really quickly tell the story as quickly as they can for what happened and then go into what they've done afterwards and how they're healing and I think it's important that all of those stories are valid and you know yes, it might be more scandalous and you might get more clips or something for TikTok out of a certain type of story, but we're not here to do that. The point of Reclaim Me was to provide survivors with a voice so that they could tell the story and reclaim the narrative of their own story. I don't know the narrative, they do. And I'm going to respect the boundaries that they create. And, you know, it all goes into editing afterwards. And I've had so many people say, can you just cut that entire bit out? I'm like, yep, sure, no worries. I don't want to put something out there that you're not okay with as well. That's not the brand that I want to promote in any way. And that's the exact authenticity that we need in this space. So again, I just like, I'm just sitting here praising you so much, but I do just really respect your platform. Um, You touched on a little bit about your future plans, but is there anything else that you're working on that you'd want people to know about? I don't think like nothing specifically, (laughs) there is an idea that is in the work. So 
Um, it is true crime related, but we'll see if it comes to fruition. If it doesn't, um, f- forget I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, we'll have a little bit of fun with details. And one last thing I wanted to kind of end on, if you have an answer for this, I don't know, you might not, but I just have a feeling, kind of going back to how we started the podcast when you were saying you just posted one video and these people were reaching out to you, I have a feeling that the same thing may happen from this episode. So if you wanted to give any advice to anybody that wanted to reach out to you or felt like compelled to come and share their story with you, like what advice would you give people? not just about sort of like how to contact you because we'll have your details, but just sort of like, I don't know, is there anything that you'd want to say to somebody that wanted to come on your platform? Yeah, I mean, um, Reclaim Me is for, for everybody. Um, it doesn't matter whether you've got 20,000 followers or two followers. It's not about that. It's about me giving people who are survivors an opportunity to tell their story. And we can do that from anywhere in the world. So if you want to connect with me, um, I'll share the links. It's at, at Re- Reclaim Me Pod on Instagram. Um, and the link tree is there. You'll be able to access everything. Um, so just feel comfortable knowing that you are valid. And you know, I think to say to people as well, an overt action does not have to have happened against you for you to have felt trauma and have been assaulted. Um, your experience is valid and it is not about comparison. And if you want to talk to me about it, please reach out. But if it is also something that is causing you hurt or trauma or anything like that, then I really do encourage you to reach out to those support services. They are free. They are local. They usually have chat functions um, and they will be the best placed people to put you into long-term services like counseling um, or different types of therapy that might be really helpful for you. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time today. And I'm sure we'll cross paths again in this space. Um, But it's been a pleasure to have you. Um, Thank you, Madeline. No, thank you so much for having me. It was so good to see you again. And I'm so (laughs) happy to see you and Sunita doing so much wonderful things. It makes my heart like sing. (laughs) The Shushbox podcast is brought to you by the team at Shushbox. We are a wellness platform created by survivors for survivors. For more information, head to www.shushbox.com and check us out on Instagram at underscore shushbox.